now we're going to have a quick look at the Illustrator interface, um, the workspace, and the palettes. Okay, so just having a look at our workspace at the moment, we'll see that on um, the left we have all our palettes, and on the right we have a few more palettes as a part of the Adobe Illustrator um, layout, and I'll have a look about that in workspaces. Um, this is the, the workspace, the general workspace you can see here, the grey background, and this is an artboard, the white space, and you can change the appearance of those, but it's pretty standard to use the that um, um, those colors. So I'll just zoom a bit, holding con um, Alt and zooming out. It's obviously different controls for Mac, but I'm just going to look at the controls for a PC at the moment. Our file menu up the top gives us, uh, uh, sorry, our menu bar at the top gives us all the options which we can control every everything from in uh, Illustrator. So if you can't find it in the tool menu, or your, sorry, or the different toolbars, you'll be able to get those um, um, options in the menu which is the long way but the, the guaranteed way to get different options. So we can control object type, select, effect, all these you'll learn about in subsequent videos. Um, what we're going to be looking at today is the window bar which shows us how we can, tr can control and save different workspaces and we can also open up all our different toolbars and these are all our toolbars down the bottom. An example of two that we have open are the control and the tools toolbar. So you'll see up here this is the control bar and this is the tools toolbar. A few last things about the interface. Um, there's a few new functions with Adobe Illustrator CS5. Um, you can go to the bridge, uh, which you might use if you start integrating your workflow with other Adobe products. You can look into that, but I won't go into it now. We can choose our workspace, dropping down using the quick workspace selection bar up here. And you can search for answers online um, and from the Adobe help um, um, menu by click typing your problem in here. It's very useful, actually, I've found. And you can get to CS Live by clicking the down, um, the drop-down menu up here, which says CS Live, and it has a few different options for tutorials and um, and panels. Click around the bottom. Um, cl uh, click on the try clicking on all the buttons around the um, extremities because they do some useful things. You'll learn about view controls in the next um, video where we can choose the um, this uh, little drop drop up menu. You could call it down here. Lets us choose the percentage choose the percentage of view. And we can choose our artboards by clicking on the drop down menu right next to it. Now we're going to have a look at um, palettes. Uh, this on the right hand side is a, a bunch of palettes, and I'll go into those in a sec. They're slightly more intelligent. Um, I'll go into our existing toolbar palette I showed you just before and show you how we can move them around and manipulate them. Uh, the two dotted lines at the top of each um, toolbar, as you can see over here as well, is how we, it allows us to click and drag and move the toolbar to different parts of our workspace if we want to free up the screen. Um, this is pretty useful because it enables you to customize your own workspace infinitely um, and you can add uh, toolbars onto the bottom um, and onto the top to create combined toolbars. For example, I will open up by going to Window and going to Align I'll get my Align toolbar. And you can see there's three tabs here, in fact, sitting side by side. If we click on the tab, it brings up a different palette. So we've got three different palettes here in the one palette to enable a, an easier, um, easier access with uh, space efficiency. And you'll see I can move these palettes to either side, and uh, it'll snap, if you see the blue line popping up, um, to one side or the other and even if there isn't a blue line it enables us to um, arrange the palettes quite easily it's very intelligent and if I let go of that you'll see that it becomes as though it were the same palette okay and if we gr if we drag the gray bar at the top we then drag all of them I can then break that quite easily by grabbing the um, and you can see it's exiting the uh, conglom conglomerated um, palette and now we have an individual palette again I'll just close the transform and align palette. A few other things. We can close a palette um, by quite naturally using the uh, cross in the top right hand corner as you would if you were using the cross um, to close Illustrator. Or oh, I might quickly mention you can maximize and minimize the windows using these two um, icons as you would in any um, program. But back to the palette, you'll notice there's two triangles pointing to the right and sometimes on the left. Um, that indicates min the minimizing nature or the second um, appearance type of a uh, palette. And you'll notice how 
that changed the toolbar to be long and skinny. If we wanted to put it on the left hand side of the screen, it means we've got um, a much more effective use of space. However, it does mean you notice down the bottom we've lost a few of our palettes. So for your particular window or monitor, you can choose the layer which works best for you. And there we go. It snapped to the side of the screen. So they snap to pretty much anything that you would want to snap to. It's a very uh, intuitive system. Okay. Now the essentials, um, which you'll see up here, workspace, and I'll have a look at the workspaces in a second, um, enables us to use these smart, um, um, these smart palettes. Now these are a whole bunch of palettes which have been uh, represented by icon. So for example, our transparency palette is represented by a, two tra a transparent circle over an opaque circle. I'm going to click on that and notice that it brings up um, the transparency palette right next to it. And if I click off it again, it will stay up. So it's quite useful if I want to edit a whole bunch of objects, apply a certain transparency, then I can just click, um, sorry, I accidentally dragged it out. I can then click on the transparency, just like that, icon and it goes back in. So we can open a couple of them and the other ones just pop away. Really useful for workflow. You'll notice in the same toolbar, in the same palette, sorry, we have them both represented in tabs. This isn't a permanent thing. We can always remove a tab so we ha it has its own palette and we can use them both side by side in case you want them both up or we can put them back in. Now my personal preference for working with palettes is to operate on two screens. So I wouldn't use a screen like this normally. I'd have um, one screen that is two monitors, sorry, one monitor um, to work in the artboard and the other monitor for all my palettes and I'd have many of them open so they would take up a lot of space but with two monitors um, it's, a, it's a very useful way to work. Especially when you, uh, you start to get used to all the different functionality that the palettes offer you. The last thing I'm going to show you today quickly is um, workspaces. So we'll go up to window and go to the workspace drop down menu. You'll see a bunch of different options for workspaces. Um, I've already described to you the characteristics of the Essentials workspace. Um, now what's most important to um, us as architecture students or people learning to use um, any Adobe um, product is to save and manage our workspaces. Uh, quite, quite simply, uh, if you create a workspace, so that is an arrangement or, of palettes that may be open, closed or in certain locations on the screen, be it across two screens, you can go save your workspace um, and it will save all the palettes in their locations um, whichever ones are open or closed. So next time you open it, you can load that workspace quite easily by, if I click cancel, clicking on the essentials um, bar and selecting which will be, would be a new workspace just down below. And you can go and manage your workspace, ma manage your workspaces um, using the manage workspace um, uh, window, which was I accessed by clicking the um, quick, the workspace quick select drop down um, menu. And you'll see there's no workspaces that I've actually created here. I'm going to select the new workspace, which is another way of creating a new workspace, which is going to make a new workspace for my current workspace. I'll call it current Jack, which is my name. I'll select OK. Then I can go up here and see current Jack at the top.